Yamaha MT-09. And uh, FZ-09, same bike, same. What's up everyone, it's Alex. I've been waiting forever to do it, I'm finally gonna do it. I'm gonna do a Yamaha FZ-09 slash MT-09 review. Yes, I know, it's a little bit late. These bikes have been out for a little while. They're not like super, super brand new. There's other reviews out there, I know that. But I used to have an FZ-09. It's like one of my favorite bikes on the planet and I'm gonna do a review on it, so whatever. So starting off, disclaimer, I do absolutely love these motorcycles. It's one of the favorite motorcycles that I've ever owned. So if you're looking for a review that's just gonna totally down on these and tell you all the reasons that these suck, probably not the review for you because I love these. And I will give you a couple of drawbacks to it, just to be fair, but I do freaking love these motorcycles. And this is mostly gonna be me telling you why I freaking love these motorcycles. So take that for what it is, okay? So, Yamaha FZ09s, MT09s. What is an FZ09? What is an MT09? They're basically the same motorcycle. The MT09 is the name that it had in like outside the US for several years. Now for 2018, they've just made the US one the MT09 also. It was the FZ09 before that here. Basically what you've got is you've got a just under 900cc, three cylinder, real world naked sport bike street fighter thing. It's basically sport bike without full fairing. Street fighter naked sport bike. 900 cc just under 900 cc triple cross plane crankshaft which has to do with a different way of doing the firing order so the crankshaft works differently way too technical again in this video if you guys want a video about cross planes i will do one it's probably going to be more on the boring side because it's all technical but cross planes have a unique firing order they started doing it on the r1 years ago and they do it on these they do it on the fz07s it's awesome good technology so you have what's basically a 900cc, three-cylinder, naked sport bike, okay? As I've said previously, I had an FZ09. Mine was a first year 2014 FZ09 orange. I put probably 15 or 16,000 miles on mine before I traded it for my highball just because I really want to give a victory a shot. Wish I had had room for both of them because I miss the FZ09 every single day. I love my highball, but I do miss my FZ09 for several reasons. So since I had my FZ09, they've made a couple of upgrades that are worth speaking about as well. When I got mine, ABS was not an option whatsoever. Now, every one of these that I get has ABS on it, so anti-lock brakes are a thing. Mine had like one solid curved headlight. In the last couple of renditions of this, they've gone to doing this cool like split headlight thing that actually looks a lot better than what mine had on it. And they went to a little bit different design in the tail section on these. Mine had a little bit different looking tail section. I kind of like the remolding that they did with the tail section a little bit. Other than that, over the years, since 14, they've just done like some fuel mapping upgrades and things to make the throttle a little bit less twitchy and a little bit more manageable. But basically, the bike has remained mostly unchanged since it came out 2014. What is this bike awesome at? What do I love about this bike? I'm going to give you that, and then I'll give you the couple of drawbacks to it, okay? So this thing is awesome for the following reasons. This was a bike that Yamaha specifically put out to cater to having an awesome bike with awesome technology in the sport category that put out a lot of new stuff that was also inexpensive. When these things first came out, Yamaha hit a target of 7,900 bucks brand new for these, which in the world of modern sport motorcycles for the kind of technology this has, the kind of horsepower it puts out, that's like unheard of. So it's 7,900 bucks brand new when they came out. Now they're 8,900 bucks brand spanking new, which still for a 900 CC sport bike that handles like this thing does and puts out this kind of power, 8,900 bucks is still pretty cheap brand spanking new. Oh, and you can find them used all day long for 5,900 bucks or less, by the way, just throwing that out there. So very inexpensive for the awesomeness that you get. So what these things have is these things have plenty of horsepower. They're over 100 horsepower, which on the street, 100 horsepower in a bike this light is plenty. They are very, very light for the kind of a bike that they are. They have incredibly good handling. And for the price that you pay, they have good suspension on them. You do get adjustable inverted front forks on the thing, and you do get an adjustable sideways mounted mono shock in the back. This is kind of a debatable thing with some people, but I think the looks on them are freaking killer as well. The way they set the whole thing up is to be as minimal as possible with kind of a less is more mentality in the construction of it. The entire frame is just this that you see right here. That's the whole frame of the bike, okay? And the way they designed the whole thing, they put the motor in as a stressed bottom part of the frame. So the frame is minimal right here. Motor completes the frame. And you have a very, very minimal subframe bolted in for the rear end. Less pieces, less weight, less overall complicated. Yamaha also for this bike followed suit with something that Buell did years ago. 
and something that Kawasaki since did in their Ninja 650. And they did an underslung, low-mounted exhaust that dumps out right behind the foot peg. So that helps get a lot of your weight and your center of mass down low with this bike, which helps a lot with your handling characteristic and helps a lot with you feeling like the bike is lighter and more manageable. Yamaha also incorporated multiple throttle modes on these bikes, so you can adjust your throttle response for different situations. Mine had three modes on it, standard, A, and B. Standard was kind of a good, like, everyday in the middle kind of a mode. A was full power, and B was more like a wet weather mode or kind of a little bit of a reduced power mode to the throttle response. So basically all those things work together to create a bike that is not expensive to buy, even brand spanking new, handles really good, has plenty of power. The cross-plane motor and the transmission they put in this thing gives it kind of an interesting, weird, different power characteristic. It's a lot like riding a street triple or a speed triple in the fact that it is a triple motor. But the cross-plane crank and the way it fires just feels a little bit different. It's almost impossible for me to describe without you riding one. But it just feels freaking awesome the way the power delivery comes from that three-cylinder motor. So you've got a light bike that's not expensive, even brand new, that handles very well, that has plenty of power, that I think looks really good, is not hard to maintain. It's basically just a really, really good all-around, everyday, naked sport bike that you can go out and play on or you can just commute on or whatever you want to do. It's a really, really good, all-rounded, awesome, naked sport bike. What do people not like about these bikes? So, specifically on mine, the 2014 that I had, the biggest complaint among most people that I experienced as well was, for a sport bike, the suspension setup stock was a little bit soft and a little bit on the squishy side. Now, at my weight, I was able to counteract this by stiffening my rear shock and my front just a little bit. By setting my shocks just a little bit stiffer, it worked out perfectly well for me for real world street riding conditions. But one thing to understand about these bikes is a lot of people that have complaints about the suspension on them are people that are comparing it to a full on super sport track bike, which is a race bike basically. The thing to understand is, is this thing was designed to be a sport bike with plenty of handling and power that also has really good everyday street manners, which means they intentionally put a little bit softer suspension on it so you can ride it on everyday roads. I don't know if you guys have ever hit a pothole on a stiff suspension super sport, but it sucks, okay? So this thing was set up and designed to be a sport bike, yes, but it was designed to be a real world everyday sport bike, which means a little bit less money spent on suspension, and it means a little bit softer suspension, okay? The other complaint that people had right out the gate with these, especially on the first couple years of them, was how snappy the throttle response was. Especially the first year like mine, had a very, very touchy, very twitchy throttle on it, okay? I mean, you could stand the thing up pretty easy without meaning to whatsoever, because it was that touchy. Yamaha has since done a couple of upgrades to the fuel mapping on these to make it much less so. But being as light as it is and a three cylinder and being as much horsepower as it puts out for how light it is, this thing is torquey and it does have a pretty aggressive basic throttle response on it. You can set the mode, you can turn that down some, but standard throttle response on these is pretty snappy. I usually don't recommend this for a complete beginner beginner because it puts out too much torque and too much horsepower. And if you make a mistake, it will let you know that you just made a mistake. It's little brother, however, it's little brother, the FZ7. If you got a good head on your shoulders and you want something bigger than 250, that is a great bike for that. FZ09, MT09s, I don't recommend this for a first bike, first bike. If you got a little bit of experience under your belt, awesome second bike, third bike, and beyond. I never should have got rid of mine. I want to have another one of these on top of having my high ball. I'm working on that. Awesome freaking motorcycle, okay? I cannot say enough good things about this bike. These are amazing bikes for a really good middle ground sport bike. If you want a bike that handles well, has tons of power, and will not leave you disappointed, will leave you smiling all the time, and you have the experience to handle a snappy bike with a lot of torque, these are freaking awesome. Two other good bikes to look at if you want a triple and you like bikes in that category. Triumph's Street Triple, and for the big one, the Speed Triple. Also amazing motorcycles, alright? Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave your comments below. Let me know if I missed anything. Take it easy.